So welcome everybody to another Healthy Dog Expo Facebook Live. We're doing these pretty much every Tuesday and Thursday from now through the expo. Today we're talking about transitioning to fresh foods with your dog with Jen Carter of Bohard Dog Nutrition. So welcome. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Yeah. So we're, it looks like we're seeing your questions and everything. So this is so, so slick. So Jen, how long have you been with Volhard now? Well, believe it or not, it's been a very speedy five years already, believe it five or not. Five years. Wow. Yeah, I can't believe it yeah. myself, but time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Or in a pandemic. Um, or two of those years being a pandemic, yes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, well, it was just yesterday that we did this. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a while, and we're so looking forward to you guys actually being with us in person at the Expo. Um, so why don't we dive in? to this topic because I think one of the things I think of and just full disclosure, when I first started feeding raw, I fed Volhard diet. I fed Wendy's recipe. She was the first, she was a pioneer of the raw food industry. And now when I look to um, ways to introduce people to feeding fresh food, this is a perfect way to get their feet wet without having them go into overwhelm. Um, initially, it, yeah, initially the recipe was somewhat complex, but very thoughtfully laid out and easy to follow. And now you've taken it to the next level. You yeah, I agree. Um, it's been a real journey, you know, um, for those of you who don't know who Wendy Volhard is, this is kind of a, an opportunity to take a look at a real hidden figure in life because in back in 1973, you know, she literally, like you said, Lori, pioneered a natural diet into the United States. She's from the UK. Mm -hmm. And it was all spun off of the longevity issue. Uh, she raised and bred uh, Newfoundlands. And the genetic material, you know, the actual Newfoundlands that she was using for breeding came from Germany. And they were living to 12 and 14 years old. And she brought that same genetic material to the United States. And they were living till six and being diagnosed with cancer and being a, a dog person. So, you know, she's always been embedded within the dog world, breeding and training. Um, nutrition came right out of that because mm -hmm. of her own need to keep her dogs healthy and happy. And given a death sentence for one of her Newfoundlands at six years old was unacceptable. And she changed the dog's diet completely to her diet. And the dog lived another six years. Yeah. Um, and she was one of the first to put the recipe to the test and add some science by her collaboration with Dr. Carrie Brown, right? Correct. Correct. Um, and, and they, they actually they traveled quite testing. extensively together. Yeah, they did blood testing on the dogs, um, eating the diet, and other validations. And there was there was nothing else like that back then. Um, so and it wasn't very popular, I will tell you that. No. Oh, I bet. I bet. I bet. Yeah. And, you know, when she first started, she was really engaged within a very uh, small circle of dog trainers, dog breeders, you know, all the people that were immersed in the dog world. It really wasn't accessible too much to the right. average person. And one of the things that we've tried to do in the last five years I've been with the company is make this accessible to mm -hmm. anyone who thinks their dog may be a candidate, you know, um, or give them a way to try or like you said make that jump from 100 percent processed food to do a fresher natural diet before mm -hmm. you know the dog's ready to be on 100 percent raw diet or before you're ready to change your lifestyle to accommodate 100 percent you know raw diet um or maybe you never get there but it's a it's a nice way to go to sleep at night and feel confident that you're doing right by the dog and not mm -hmm. guessing. Somebody's already done that for you. And somebody's already taken care of the safety issues. And, uh, and you know, uh, in, just to bring forward the third-party testing that we did with your company. Yeah. You know, to create transparency about, hey, this isn't just what we think is in the diet. We've tested it in a blind test. This is what's actually in the diet. Yeah. Yeah. The value of that is huge. Um, yeah. And, you know, I often um, battle when I go to work at the clinic with people who are afraid of doing it wrong. They're afraid to 
just put raw in the bowl. They go out on these Facebook groups and, and other social media sites and search out raw diet. And I mean, that's a war zone of people oh, giving yeah. good advice, bad advice, trolling others. I mean, just it's crazy. Right. So or just making them feel insecure yeah. about the choices they're making. Right. Just just that, you know, a comment can ruin somebody's security in that moment yeah. when they think they're doing the right thing. Yeah. And the person who, yeah, they were feeding, um, you know, let's say, well, Rachel Ray. I have to, the, other, the other day I had Rachel Ray feeders and they're like, I, I know this isn't the best. I want to do better. But then somebody comes at them and says, well, you fed Rachel Ray and, right. you know, there's dog DNA in Rachel Ray dog food, um, which there is. Right. And, you and know, it's things. awful. And they feel like they've hurt their dog and, you know, you haven't accomplished anything. So what are your tips, right. top three, for having someone, you know, giving them, giving them the why of fresh food? Why should they... Why should they get off that processed food? Where do you start? Yeah, I, I mean, t top three. I mean, I know that I'm preaching to the choir here, probably to this group, because a right. lot of you are probably already feeding fresh or already made that decision in your mind. But for those of you who joined and are on the fence for some reason, there is a great benefit to feeding a fresh food. And it doesn't only come, at, here's, here's the down low of it. You know, what will it do over time? Well, here it is. You know, we're looking at increased energy levels. That's my top thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to take a dog that might be dragging, that is digesting food all day, that is not getting the amount or is deficient in certain elements of that diet for whatever the reason. And you switch to a fresh diet. And the first thing that we hear is, wow, my dog is like a puppy again. I can't mm -hmm. believe this is happening. I, the energy level, good sleep, nice play calm behavior. You know, it's that, it's that normal energy. It's not the neurotic, um, sort of spaz, hyper weird energy that comes from a dog that is deficient right. or that does not feel good. It's a good, calm energy, which is a capable energy. It allows your dog to be who they want to be because they're satiated. So that would be the first thing, energy. Um, the other thing that we get a tremendous amount of the time is excitement at mealtime, that there's a lot of dogs out there that have become very picky, mm -hmm. that are not excited about what they're eating. They choose not to eat it, which means a deficit because calorically they're not getting what they need over the course of the day. I get a lot of people that say, well, my dog, I put the food down on the floor and they're like, meh, you know, yeah. I don't what to do with it. So I have to add stuff to it, which is all financially taxing toppers and supplements. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, you guys, you can't out supplement a bad diet. It's just never going to happen. You have to look at the base of the food and you say, why is my dog not excited about eating? Mm -hmm. It's such a good energy time. So fresh food provides a hugely bioavailable uh, ingredient base. Um, most of the time it's hydrated. So the dog is drinking enough water, not staying mm -hmm. in a constant state of dehydration. And they're getting from their food what they need to get from their food in 10 minutes. You put the food down, they eat it, you pick it up, you're on your way. Yeah. Um, so that's the great part about that. The third one is going to be really popular. And all my fresh feeders already are going to be like, whoop, whoop, is I know you're going to be upset to hear about this, but the stool volume <laughs> is significantly less. And I know that all of you are really excited to get out there and clean up your yards and to pick up a pile of poop that looks like a horse went through. But um, <laughs> one of the beautiful things about fresh feeding is that it's being used by the body in an yeah. appropriate way. And only the insoluble fibers are coming through because your dog has to defecate. There's, there's no out of that. <laughs> Can't be a hundred percent usable. Um, but it's so much nicer to be able to go out and to have a normal firm, well-formed stool that you just don't have to worry about you and know it doesn't that, smell and it doesn't smell and i know you guys are upset you guys want you want more stool but i'm not going to give it to you here in my pitch on fresh yeah. feeding well and as i said when i go to the clinic and i see dogs eating various kibbles uh, the other day this dog was so nervous and of course 
she came in the exam room and everywhere there was poop. And we oh, were boy. opening windows. And that oh, does not happen with a fresh food dog. No, it, it really it, doesn't. You know, and, it, and the health it, of the dog, you can really see that in the fecal matter. And yeah. you want to be able to have consistency. You want to be able to say with certainty, wow, the digestive tract looks good. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing parasites. You know, the stool is nice and firm. It is indicative of a healthy digestion and process. Yeah. And not, you know, bacteria just feasting on exactly. products and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And you want, I mean, here's me at the bottom line. I don't want to pay a lot of money for food and just, I could go pour it in my front yard if that's what I'm going to do, because right. I'm just using my dog as a processor. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, for me, I always hit the health angle of, you know, we lower cancer risk, we lower diabetes risk, we lower so many things yes. like going to fresh food. And I emphasize it's cheaper. You know, you're saving money it on sure that bills because a high end kibble uh, really can be several dollars a pound. And that's your, and like I said, crazy. you're putting that in your front yard. I mean, exactly. never mind, Lori, on the other health benefits. You know, you're going to see this healthy skin and coat mm -hmm. and healthy nails. You're going to have a, a dog that grows at an appropriate rate. Right. 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 That's super important. You're going to have the ability to maintain a healthier weight balance over the course of that dog's life. Right. We're not talking about obese dogs. We're right. We're talking about the ability to feed your dog like you feed yourself, which is based on calories ins and outs of the body efficiently mm -hmm. and be able to support your dog in a way that you've never been able to support your dog before because you're looking at calories instead of cups. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a really funny thing. And um, I know, as you mentioned, uh, most of our audience is probably already on the fresh food wagon. Correct. But we all talk to people. And that's one of the things I really wanted to get out of this session was tips on talking to people so we don't come across as missionaries and get tuned out right? Um, because we've all been there. And so we don't overwhelm the person with new information. We make it seem like something that's achievable, that they can actually do this because um, owners are nervous. They, they are afraid of hurting their dog. The industry is out there telling them that it's impossible for them to feed a nutritionally complete food unless they feed kibble. It's right. crazy. Sorry, guys. It was a long night. Um, so then, you know, once people are, are embracing the idea, they're like, yeah, I get this. I know why I want to do this. Right. How do you take them to uh, getting started steps? You know, do you have so here's, you know, use or? Yeah. And I'm going to share with you some ideas and some of this, this is, you know, I'm going to share with you ideas that you can do right now without buying any kind of supplementation. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to share with you ideas on how Volhard can actually play a role in this conversation. Um, if time is restraining, right? So we all have busy lives and we don't all have access to good quality ingredients. So all of these things balanced out at the end of the day, it's about your ability to source things, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of that conversation is, well, maybe it's just easier to find a good trusted company where I can get some of those things and be able to start without becoming Julia Childs in the process yeah. or becoming a canine nutritionist, because that too is a rabbit hole that not everybody wants to go down. Right. 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 Um, so the first thing that I would tell you, and you're going to hear this uh, from just about everyone, and mm -hmm. that is do not be afraid to augment what you're feeding now. Now, whether that's a homemade diet that's not been audited and you have no idea actually what you're feeding across the board, whether that's balanced, whether you're missing things, you just want to make it better, okay? Um, or you're feeding kibble right now and that's okay and you're doing the best that you can, mm -hmm. but you want to make that better. There is a way to do that. And it's about adding at least 20% fresh ingredients to the dog's food that you're feeding now. Now, obviously that's two different conversations, a homemade diet mm -hmm. versus kibble, but let's just hit kibble for a second first. You have a dry food diet. Yes, whatever's on the bag is on the bag. You know it's deficient. We know it's deficient because it's 
can sit on a shelf for 14 years in nuclear war. Okay. <laughs> We're going to make it better. It's okay. There is some nutrition in that bag. I promise you. Now it may come in the way of synthetics, but there's nutrition in the bag. Okay. We can make it better. So think about adding vegetables. Think about things like cruciferous vegetables. Think, think about things like broccoli, things like squash, mm -hmm. zucchini, pumpkin, even hundred percent pumpkins. Nice. Sure. Beets are nice. Um, these types of vegetables obviously have to be processed to some element, whether you puree that, you have to break the cell walls of the vegetables. If you feed them 100% raw or in chunks, what's going to happen is they're going to pass through and they'll do a job cleaning out the intestinal tract, but mm -hmm. they're going to pass through and your dog's not going to reap the benefit 100% of the nutrients that can be absorbed because those cell walls will keep it from happening. Okay. Right. But if you, and, and Lori, you know this, if you yeah. process it gently, right, right, then chop it up, you roast it, you steam it whatever you're thinking about doing in order to break those cell walls down. And then you add that in there. And I'm saying an appropriate amount. We're not talking about flipping your dog's diet into something 60% carb heavy. You already have that with kibble as we, mm -hmm. we stated, but we want to add a percentage of this, you know, somewhere between five and 10%, depending on what kind of vegetable you're feeding, um, that will freshen the diet will awaken your dog's body and create live enzymes and vitamins and minerals and all these things that are now bioavailable to the dog. Now, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be out there and, and trolling on Facebook and, and Google and all those things. And there are going to be people in a camp that say dogs do not need vegetation. Oh, God, yeah. Yes. And then you're going to be with a group that says vegetation is good. Well, Pretty much any position that you sit in, you can find somebody that's either on your side or against you. Trust me. You can get thrown out of a lot of Facebook groups too, oh, asking about I, vegetables. Once a week, I get thrown out of something just by bringing up the talk of grains. Um, so there you go. I am already unwelcomed in the moment. Um, but vegetables are great. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I just want you to think about it. Back in the day, many, many years ago, as I am storytelling, when whole prey diets were available to dogs. That means dogs were going out, chasing a rabbit and eating a rabbit from nose to tail, okay? The whole thing. Then whatever that rabbit ate is sitting in the stomach. And those dogs would get that nice ratio of plant to prey, right? Right. Well, your dog is not doing that. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. Now, my hound, I can say is doing that around Easter when everybody's making babies. Um, but the average dog is, does not have access to whole prey on a regular basis. That's okay. So what we do as pet parents is we mimic that and we give them some of that plant medium mm -hmm. in a way that they can absorb it so that they can benefit from those small ratio of plant matter that they would have gotten if they were out seeking it for themselves. Right. And that is good thing. That is a good thing. Yes, without a doubt. Um, and, you know, the, the veggie fruit, you know, whatever, the people who feel your dog cannot subsist without at least three secreting organs in their, their raw. Right. And the truth is they can do just fine without any organs if you put your diet together correctly and make sure all the nutrients are needed that are present. Um, Janet was asking, and actually let sure. me I can do this, get all fancy here. I like it. There. Hi, Janet. How's that puppy doing? Uh, what are our thoughts on balance over time versus a com nutritionally complete diet being fed every day? Janet's been feeding raw forever as loads of skills. A Outstanding. Big and such. Where do you stand on the balance over time versus? So and that's a great the, question. For the purposes Janet. of this, let's say time is a week. Yeah, like I think. Okay, look. Let's look at our own diets for a second, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't. Every single meal we sit down to. Well, ideally, it would be lovely if someone were preparing it for me and Wouldn't setting it, it in front of me, and it was complete and balanced every single time. <laughs> but I can tell you, if I'm being also honest, that is not the case, and. It's about trust, but verify, okay? And I say that very cleanly because 
there are ways that you can get feedback from your dog to see if you're on the right track. And you need to, it's an onion. You need to peel it back, right? You can't just do one thing and just hope for the best. The balance over time without verifying that what you're doing is correct, that I'm not as big a fan of because mm -hmm. you're going to get surprised at some point and it's going to be with deficiency or disease. And unfortunately, if you're waiting for something to express, that's bad, okay? Because it's easier, you know, like they say, to never let something bad happen in the beginning versus trying to fix it once it's already happened. So while I am a proponent of, listen, you're not gonna get it right every single time. Things are going to be unbalanced to some degree, but you need to have a checks and balances somehow. So if you're a hundred percent raw feeder and you're worried about calcium phosphorus ratios, you're worrying about omega three, six ratios, you're worrying about protein to fat ratios, you need to keep some kind of log if you're balancing over time so that you know what you're feeding during the days, what you're missing so that you can get that in there within the week. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I can't remember why I walk in the kitchen half the time. So <laughs> if I don't write it down, I'm going to be like, did I, huh? Well, Okay. And now I'm guessing, right? So I say, make it easy on yourself. We all have fast lives. Jot something down, right? Yeah. I completely or, agree. The other thing that I warn against is puppies. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am not a proponent of feeding puppies a, an unbalanced diet while they're growing because you cannot, you cannot keep up with the growth spurts and the necessities and needs that that dog needs when they need it, not when you notice they need it. So for puppies, I would say, let's stick to a fresh diet that is as close to complete and balanced every meal with augmentation for certain issues if you need it, you know? Um, and I say that my example is bone broth, for example. If you pick a dog, a puppy that you know is a Labrador retriever, they're going to have joint issues. So jump in there from the time that they're a puppy and augment that diet with some joint friendly stuff going forward in a natural way, right? Absolutely. Be proactive up front. Puppies on a hope and see diet, not a good idea. The other a group that I don't like to do a hope and see diet on are senior dogs sometimes mm -hmm. because they also have different needs. Listen, I'm not the spring chicken I used to be. And I'm going to tell you stuff breaks on a whim. So yeah. all of a sudden you're walking along, you've done that every time and now you've sprained your ankle. So, okay, I'm obviously deficient in something because the strength in that ankle is the expression, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go, kids. This is the way you have to think proactively. This is what Lori tells me all the time. Yep, be think proactive. proactively, get in front of it, know who you have sitting in front of you and verify. And one of the things Wendy Volhard always did was regular wellness testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, and I add to that. So Wendy was doing fecal blood. She was doing kinesiology. She was doing all kinds of, you know, uh, other kinds of tests. I'm going to add that. I'm going to challenge you and add for you, um, hair tissue, mineral analysis mm -hmm. once a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially if you're feeding over time, feeding over time. Um, I would say vitamin, vitamin B12, D. vitamin D. Yeah, Those we have kinds so of many, there's so many uh, new testing options out there. Uh, yes. micro, microbiome testing. Microbiome testing, yes. So no always, one's going you know, on. You know, I always, I always think of my raw feeding clients and such. They're like, they don't want to take the dog to the vet because often the vet just argues about what they're feeding the dog. But they're like, well, the dog's healthy. He doesn't need. And that's true. The dog is right. healthier than the kibble fed dog. But this is the kind of wellness stuff that keeps your dog healthier longer. So yeah, the the VDI. And remember, I mean, testing. listen, I learned a lot from Dr. Koger right here. Like she speaks the truth. So when she preaches, you need to stand up and pay attention. An <laughs> HTMA test is looking back 45 days. Right. A blood test is in that moment. So maybe in that moment, because you fed your dog earlier that day, in that moment, it looks like your dog is not deficient. But when you do that HDMA test, you notice that your minerals are out of balance. Mm -hmm. And that's a 45 day window look back. And now you're noticing that for the last 45 days, your dog has been deficient. Yeah. That my friend is 
gold nuggets right there. Yeah. You can fix things knowing what you know. Well, and when we do HTMAs and we look at what the results are in comparison with the diet fed, I'll have people doing homemade diets that literally are cooked, no bone, no calcium supplement. And those dogs are walking around calcium deficient all the time. And oh. eventually it's going to catch up with them. Well, um, it happened with us. Do you remember? Right, I was feeding right. my dog a mix that had bone in it. Mm -hmm. And I did the HTMA test and I, I neglected to tell anyone that I had switched my protein source had bone in it instead of just being muscle meat for the right. Volhar diet. And Lori called me up and said, why is your dog's calcium high? Yeah. why is And it I said, aha, uh -huh. I was mm -hmm. doing a little bit of an experiment to see what it would do to the mineral balance. And I'm going to tell you that just supplementing instead of muscle meat with the Volhar diet, adding a mix showed up on the HTMA test. And I will tell you, it did not show up in blood work. Yeah, no, the body is, the body is able to maintain homeostasis so well mm -hmm. in the moment, but it's over time that nutritional stuff catches up with you. And Catherine, this is the kind of the testing that we're talking about, verifying that your dog is getting what a nutritionally complete uh, plan and also calculating what you're feeding. You know, we exactly are right. And one of the things about using a company and yeah. I, I use Volharden as, as a as a an example is that you can look on what is in the diet and our third party testing that we released and you know what's in there. So if you know what you're feeding in a home diet and you need to augment using something from Volhard is easy to measure in, easy to audit your diet because mm -hmm. we're giving you what we've got in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just put the link in there for Parsley Pet. That's our recommended. Excellent. HMA. I highly recommend. Oh, look, now it's going to come through. And, and you'll notice, guys, and, and this may be convenient for you. We are broadcasting this on my Dr. Lori Koger page, on the Healthy Dog Expo page, and on the YouTube channel. So if you want to share this video with friends, um, we'll have those links available for you. Uh, Janet just offered vitamin D or just got a vitamin D test through Dr. Morgan. Yes. And well that's done. the lab I'm talking about. That's where I do mine. They have cancer profiles, all sorts of early detection, yep. proactive testing. Um, <laughs> and Janet, I, Janet's coming to the expo. You'll meet her. She's amazing. I can't wait. Her vet is head at me. Um, I'll show you this. And, uh, her vet always shakes his head at her and uh, wonders what she's doing. But Janet's a woman ahead of her time. Good for you, Janet. Way to stand up and be your own person. Listen, Absolutely. I listen. I've, I'm a canine nutritionist, and I still would have a visceral response when I had to first tell a vet that I was feeding a raw diet, and I was just waiting and cringing inside. Outside, mm -hmm. I was, you know, smiling. And inside, I thought to myself, oh, gosh, here it comes, the shaming. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen to me now? And now yeah. I just say it as a statement. I feed a raw diet. This is what I'm feeding. If you have any questions, let me know. And my vet, Dr. Slovis, who's in, in Virginia at Lake Anna Veterinary Hospital, he is outstanding. He puts up with all my shenanigans. <laughs> I bring him all kinds of test results. He's been seeing my dogs for seven years now. He's right. seen their blood work. He's seen everything. And he's a, an advocate for Volhard now because proof is in the pudding, right? right? He's seen it. He has clients that are on Volhard now. You can't lie on a blood test. It's either good or it's not right. good. Right. You know, you can't lie when you have the dog sitting on the table in front of you and the dog's skin and coat look great. And they're the healthy weight. Mm -hmm. And it's consistent for the last seven years. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there it is. Proof's in the pudding. So hold fast, be strong. You know, you're doing the right thing. Be brave and always go back to the company. If you're feeding a company's food, if you're having trouble with your vet, go back to that company and ask them for help. Those of you who feed Volhard, you can come back to me anytime and I will provide your veterinarian just like I did Lori. I will mm -hmm. provide them with whatever they need in the way of answers so they can feel comfortable. Now, yeah. the unique thing about the Volhar diet, as, as opposed to others, is that you can cook the meat. You can gently cook the meat. Mm -hmm. So if you do have a dog that's 
healing from injury or is a senior dog that's got IBD or, you know, they, you just, they can't handle the full bacteria load of a, a raw diet, then you can gently cook the meat and still get to the same outcome, which is yeah. great without changing the food a hundred thousand times. Right. That's, that's huge. And, um, you know, there are, there's, I used to be very, um, strict in that I wanted the dogs eating raw and raw doesn't work for every dog or every owner. And I've gotten to the point where I would much rather have that person cooking and cooking lightly. Don't cook it to death. Yeah. You don't um, bounce off the floor or anything, but yeah. cooking that, um, lightly and feeding a human quality, fresh food. Correct. Diet. And on Thursday, Susan Thixton and I are going to dive into the whole human quality uh, claim. Outstanding. You uh, want so food grade, guys. You want food grade. You, you, you know, food, there is a difference food. between feed grade yeah. and food grade. Yeah. You can only do what you can do. And like Lori said, you know, this whole topic is on how do you transition? How yeah. do you freshen up your diet? You know, you can do what you can do. You know, you have a dog. Congratulations. It's a wonderful addition to your life. Mm -hmm. Financially, you can only do what you can. If you live yeah. in a certain area and you you have a choice between something that is heavily loaded with antibiotics and steroids and all those things, it may not be your go-to to add that or use it, right? So right. other things that you can add in besides meat, and I'm going to tell you, you can take kibble and you can add some gently braised meat. You can add raw meat to that to bring mm -hmm. in those amino acids. You can add, we have a, a product called Endurance or Veggie Pack that comes with liver in it. That liver profile, I don't care if you're feeding sawdust. Once you add this mm -hmm. liver profile, you now have given your dog every essential amino acid that they need in order to right. make good taurine and to do those things. You can do those things. I. I'm not the kind of person that says you shouldn't feed kibble with raw food. Well, oh, we okay. To, we used to think that now. We yeah. used to think that it had a digestive, a negative digestive element. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you this. Each dog is different. So I always say start slow. With whatever you choose to do, start slow. Yes. You can always add more, but you can't take it back. So <laughs> start yeah. slow. Let your dog's body get used to it. Now, you have to remember, if you've been feeding kibble for a long time, mm -hmm. there are some enzymes that have become dormant. You have got to give your dog's body a chance to catch up to the game you're playing. Yeah. yeah. You know? So you can help them by adding a digestive enzyme and say, awaken amylase, awaken <laughs> lipase, right? Or you can start slow. Yeah. And you can even start gently cooked and then cook it less and less and less and less Agreed. until you get to raw. I'm going to tell you, I had an 18 year old dog who never ate raw, even though I tried to switch him and it was a textural thing with him. Oh really? Yes. He did not like the mushiness of raw meat, but as soon as I braised it and firmed it up a little bit, he was off to the races. Okay. You know, and you meet so the dog where he was 18. Are. He got, yeah. he got gently cooked food. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. I've just put in the link for Volhard Dog Nutrition. Someone was asking. And Libby, I hope you saw that answer. HTMA stands for hair tissue mineral analysis. Correct. Um, one of the best ways to assess minerals and heavy metals in um, a body, whether it's a dog, a horse, a cat. Um, hair is the preferred substrate. And uh, minerals, you guys, minerals are like a triangle. You can't pull on one corner of the triangle without affecting the others. They're all yeah. connected. So if you have too much of one thing, there's a guarantee that you're deficient in another. And each of those minerals pull against each other and for each other. So you have to really pay attention to that sort of thing because of the cause and effect issue that's there. Exactly. Um, Raquel, Raquel Lee, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, this is the topic for Thursday's live. So be sure to join us here Thursday at two with the amazing Susan Thixton. Um, and Kim, the link to Parsley Pet is above, fire up in the comments. Um, so the veggie pack you mentioned, do you want to elaborate on that a bit for Alora? 
Absolutely. So what Full Hard did, and this was out of a need that our clients brought to us, was that a lot of our clients feed according to Chinese medicine. And they follow five element theory, which is about fueling protein. Yep. Um, looking for seasonal feedings. So it follows the premise of certain things grow certain times of year for a reason. And when they're growing, somehow that should be incorporated into the diet. It's all a part of that energy balance and what those Mm -hmm. elements bring to the body certain times of the year. So we came up with this veggie pack and it was for all of the folks who, for a number of reasons, one, don't have access to fresh vegetables all the time or all Mm -hmm. year long. Two, don't want to have to process large amounts of vegetables. I don't. I mean, listen, I'm all for going to the market and spending a whole Sunday afternoon chopping and, you know, roasting and how lovely that is. Okay. Not every single Sunday. Mm-hmm. So, and sometimes when folks are traveling, well, how are you going to do that? So we put together a convenient travel friendly vegetable pack. That is a coarse chop. You can see all the vegetables that are there. They have been gently cold dehydrated. And what that means is the temperatures never reach over the amount where the vegetables are actually cooked. So this is a raw product. The liver that is in this product, we have one that is plain, no Mm -hmm. liver. And then we have ones that have liver in them, like pork liver or beef liver. And that is freeze dried. So assume that is raw also. Um, Even though it's gently processed in the freeze dried process, uh, it is still to be handled as raw food. Um, With the dehydrated process, all you have to do is add a little bit of warm water. And with under five minutes, you have this beautiful bouquet of vegetables. And I'm going to tell you, there's zucchini in there. There's Mm -hmm. beet. There's carrot. These are organic, by the way, non-GMO vegetables. All of our stuff is non-GMO. There's broccoli florets in there, which you can see. You can actually see the skin of the zucchini. It's quite lovely. And if you were to cook your meat and mix this in, you could have a burrito bowl. I'm just saying as a person, (laughs) I would get the non-liver part. Yeah, I would Um, recommend avoiding the liver as well. Yes. Asparagus is in there. Um, There are some oils. There are also some herbs that are in there. All of our diets incorporate the balance of vegetation in the way of vegetables and herbs. Okay. Mm. We like that balance. And there's a lot of research that goes into complementary parts of this conversation. What things help other things get absorbed? Mm -hmm. What things are there because they provide a, a nutritional element? And on our website, if you go under company, You can look at ingredients in depth and you can literally look up every single vegetable that we use and every ingredient we use, why we use it and how it benefits the dog. So the beauty of the veggie pack is one pound of vegetables that are in this pack hydrate to four pounds. Nice. And you can carry it with you anywhere and it's not going to ruin in any way. So if you're go, if your lifestyle takes you outside or you are a sporting showing person um, that you're going in the ring, you're not going to sit there and start chopping away at carrots tick, 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 <laughs> in the middle of a ring environment. But the beauty of this is that you can, as a kibble feeding person, one, you have the beautiful amino acid profile of the liver mm-hmm. and you can throw these vegetables and liver into the diet and boom, it's better already. It's better already. You know, my other thing, I always go back to Steve Brown and sardines. Yes. To to be able for something as simple as a person who wants to make kibble better, a can of sardines costs about a dollar at the grocery store, just sardines and water. That can make such a difference, bringing omega threes and proteins and healthy fats to that, that kibble, that processed stuff. And the dogs love them. Absolutely. I tell you what, I have a, I have a Yorkshire Terrier who will not eat a vegetable if it was wrapped in bacon. Uh, She will take that bacon off and she will spit out a zucchini (laughs) faster than you can say go. But for some reason, pork liver in combination with vegetables seems to be the magic. The secret sauce. Beautiful secret sauce. It's a hundred percent natural. And I'm going to tell you that my Yorkshire Terrier is on our rescue diet, which Mm -hmm. is a hypoallergenic diet. Um, Yorkie hypoallergenic. That should bring some buttons for some folks there. Of course she is. Um, And 
she eats it up as if I had just given her candied bacon in that bowl. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, dogs get these preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Paul is saying sardines at Walmart, 88 cents. Booyah. Seasons, you know, oh, in water. Cool. I love it. Yeah. I do not rinse my sardines because I'll be rinsing good things off. Um, I, I don't either. So, you know, get over the fact. Here's the other thing. It's, salt is like vegetables. People are like, oh, my God, you can't feed this too much salt. And it's like it's going on one meal. That's it. Um, and so if you're no, feeding a, a hydrated diet to begin with, yeah. then your dogs are not going to be dehydrated. Yeah. And dogs don't have salt issues. So no, no don't be, don't rinse them off. Get every bit of that good, healthy, juicy, whatever it is. The brine, the whatever thing. brine it's become, you know, yeah. it's, I guess so. Well, and you know, the fish lived in the ocean. Of course they're going to be salty. Right. You know, it's, right. it's okay. And uh, you know, you can, if, if you're really worried about it, you can use the frozen ones, which yes. you know, are individually frozen. Do defrost them out first. Don't feed them frozen. Yes. That just seems crazy. Um, well, there is that theory that cold food, even for people, they tell you not mm -hmm. to drink cold drinks when, you, when you're eating because it does change digestion speeds. Yeah. Um, so if you're handing, as a snack, listen, I use smelt. I give my dog a small smell to have a snack in the, in the summer and it's frozen. But when I feed my dogs, their meals, mm -hmm. they are, I try to make them room temperature to slightly warm as if it was body temperature, because I want them to get the most out of that. Not only it's the most appealing. Yeah. And, and uh, I too would make that clarification for something that is a treat versus mm -hmm. something that I'm counting on for, you know, nutrition. Right. Um, Julia, I'm glad you brought this point up. Uh, you get sardines at your seafood market. I have seen sardines range in size from about two, maybe two and a half inches long in a can to almost 10 inches in a bag. As so, a yeah, it's just when they got harvested. Um, yeah. And I find Still considered a small fish, even at 10 inches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, supposedly under six, they're not supposed to be harvested for frozen use, um, but they're illegal, Ill, excuse me, illegal sardines. Um, so yeah, there's a variety of sizes. They're all good, all good. So what haven't we hit here? We talked um, about I was gonna why, say, we talked about I was how. Gonna say another additive uh, to throw in there for people that will make things better are herbs. Consider some yes. herbs. If, if for some reason you can't augment with, fruits or you find yourself devoid of healthy vegetables in that moment seasonally, mm -hmm. then look to herbs. Yeah. Herbs are a wonderful bridge between nutrition and physical wellness. Yeah. And easily accessible most of the time in their natural form, not even in a dried form. And look at parsley, look at oregano, you know, uh, you know, look at things like burdock root or mm -hmm. ginger, you know, yeah. Any those of kinds of things. Yeah. And I would read up on each of these things. That's really going to freshen the diet. They're mm -hmm. going to bring to bear vitamins, minerals. Look at healthy oils. Mm -hmm. You know, those kinds of things are an easy ad, you guys. Yeah, definitely easy. Uh, Kim also asks about grinding the sardine with the head. Sure. There's a lot sure. of vitamin e and selenium in eyeballs and such. Uh, and grains. And, and grains, yeah. Um. Janet asks, can you overdo omega-3 sources? How often do you add omega-3s? Um, I'm, I'm kind of a five-day-a-week omega-3 person. Me too. Uh, Antioxidant levels. Yeah. So you do have to watch the omega-3-6 ratio, um, but that's because of the sixes. So sixes yeah. introduce inflammation at times. So if the sixes are more than the threes, then you're, you're, you have an imbalance the way you don't want to have an imbalance. Mm -hmm. But good DHA, good EPA, you, you want to have those omega-3s. It's a numbers game, you guys. Not yeah. You're going to give your dog a half a teaspoon of a great omega-3 mix, right? Mm -hmm. It's not all going to make it where it's going. Yeah. yeah that's so true. it's a numbers game to some degree where you're diversifying. And I, I would really say that. Pick a marine source. Do a krill oil. 
do a small fatty fish, do a, you know, a, a nice, uh, you can even do calamari oil. Now they have mm -hmm. that. They have an algal oil. You sure. can find these different ways to introduce and get at the same goal, but keep the body guessing. That's what you want. You don't want the body. This is where intolerances come from. When you have one thing that you go to every time for the next 15 years, I guarantee you at some point your dog's going to develop an intolerance to it, or they're not going, that door is going to be shut inside mm -hmm. the gut lining and you're going to be wasting your money. But if you diversify, and that means food too, you know, listen, this is why Volhard is, is convenient because it can be folded into the rotation. Um, your rotation of four or five brands, you know, you can use it here and there, but it creates a different sourcing. It creates different ingredients and it creates diversity. And that's what you want to keep your dog's body guessing on nutrients. Yeah, I, I completely agree and optimize absorption when the body is used to yes. seeing variety. They just, the dogs do better. And I think that's where a lot of my pet dogs at the clinic, you know, they've eaten the same, you know, pet food, same brand, same flavor, same everything, sometimes for a decade or more. And it's, it's like, easy to do. How? Yeah. Well, you know, they send the husband to the store, get the one in the green bag or get the purple. Okay. Bag. It that's works. It. The dog's fine. Yeah. And, you know, there, but there's such a difference between survive and thrive. And. I have owners that have never seen a dog that's truly thriving, which is sad. It, and, and it's their dog, you know, and, their dog. I, and this is the thing at the end of the day, I have a 12 year old Yorkie. I don't look at her like a 12 year old Yorkie. I look at her as a Yorkie that mm -hmm. needs these things because of her lifestyle. Right. And I feed her body with the feedback it gives me. She happens to be 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a, five-year-old hound mix that has a different lifestyle, a very active lifestyle. She does canacross with me. She's in the ring with me. Uh, she yeah. is burning a thousand calories a day. Mm -hmm. And I have to feed her significantly differently because I want her yeah. body to stay healthy and for her to be able to do that for as long as she possibly can. So she has a different set of criteria for me. And this is how you have to look at the dog that's in front of you. You have to say, here, I have this base food. These are the nutrients I have that I need to yeah. make sure that, that this dog has. And now I have to look at lifestyle of that dog. I have to look at age of that dog. I have to look at the breed of that dog. And knowing what you know, let's tinker now. Yeah. Let's, let's have that solid foundation Correct. and build upon it. Build upon that. Definitely. And don't worry about your dog being senior and don't worry about what year your dog is. Feed your dog for the healthy dog that your dog is. And yeah. don't let that number scare you because it's just a number. <laughs> to, or, listen, or as we say, count my rings when I go. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Nobody's going to yeah. know how old I am. Cut me in half. Count my rings. Yeah. You've reached level 29. And exactly. It, that's it. Or level 39. And when, like Lori, when you see your dog thrive, when you change to a fresh diet and you see the difference in their energy level, yeah, all of a sudden you're like, I got my dog back. Yeah. And that yeah. is the moment. And that's pretty and universal. it's never too late. It's never too late. I don't care if you have a 14-year-old dog. If you want to start feeding fresh, I say, let's do it. Oh, yeah. I completely agree. So I'm going to bring up uh, Sharon. Um who asked about feeding a dog with illnesses. Um, I don't know if I can show, can show two. And one with bladder stones. Uh, you sh if you follow Dr. Judy Morgan, she did an excellent rant today on bladder stones <laughs> and dogs. She I occasionally, sure did. Uh, did you hear it? Yes. Yeah. Um, bladder stones are not nutritional in dogs, folks. They're not nutritional in dogs in general, with the exception of uh, like Dalmatians with uh, stones. So uh, hop over to Dr. Judy Morgan and listen to her. They're more related to uh, urine concentration and the presence of infection in that bladder. But your point- I will tell you, I will tell you, once your dog starts having any kind of urinary issue, 
Dry food's off the counter for you. Exactly. You have to go to a hydrated food. Your dog is no longer a candidate for being yeah. chronically dehydrated anymore. No, and and if it's a cat, um, you know, that's- And they should cool. never be on a dry diet, but okay. No. <laughs> there's no, my, there's cool. my tip of the day. There's your cat tip of the day? That's my cat tip of the day. Now, Cats does Walmart have a cat product? Have you ever thought about it? Well, yes, and we get asked every day when yep. our cat line is coming. And I'm going to tell you that cats are so, so helpful in the process of helping you feel like you're accomplishing something. Because as soon as you think you have a food that they're going to love, there's 12 that look at you and say, I'm going to throw up in your shoe later. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a reason why it's Volhard dog nutrition. Yeah, dogs are just, you know, they're just mm -hmm. not yeah. quite as high maintenance when it comes to their particular wants and desires and it's just easier for them to tell you they one throw it up much faster and they don't hold you they don't hold a grudge <laughs> so if they don't like it you know cats they're they're lovely they either won't go up and eat it they'll just look at you and say i'm gonna bury that or they eat it and then do something to you later because yeah. they're angry yeah. yeah they they do have anger issues <laughs> or but or they we're just trying. some of our line does work for cats so, yeah. um, so if someone the veggie pack obviously is not a contender, but our digestive enzymes work for cats. Okay. Um, our endurance works for cats. Uh, we do have, you know, our krill oil, things like that. They mm -hmm. are cat crossovers, um, yeah. which we have found to be successful. Um, maybe someday I could sit in front of all of you and say that I've cracked the cat nugget, but <laughs> not, it's not today. No, no. <laughs> um, I've never, well, I don't have a cat. But my friend's cat that she wanted to convert to being raw never worked. Never worked. Yeah. But they'll bring you a mouse. That's fine. It's really, it's quite fickle a yeah. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> or we used to have a barn cat at Cornell that would catch pigeons. And she'd bring them in the office on the sofa and arrange them delightfully. That's but lovely. yeah, show them, show them a beautiful human quality, fresh food meal. No interest. Well, those of you who have hound dogs, I'm new to this and I yeah. have learned the hard way that there are some gifts that come home sometimes Oh yeah. that I should be happier about, but I'm always shocked to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and living in beautiful central Virginia, there's more wildlife. We have a plethora. Yeah. yeah yes. We love, we love Easter. That's all I have to say is that poor <laughs> Easter bunny. Mm. Yeah. Thank God there's doppelgangers. That's all I have to say. <laughs> There'd be a lot of disappointed children. There would be. There would be. Just remember, you guys, you can't do anything wrong. There's only food on this planet. There isn't dog food and human food. There's only food on this planet. Some things dogs digest better than others. So, you know, be careful what you feed. Mm -hmm. Just like humans, some of you should probably not be eating some things, even though you like the way they taste. Um but you can't do it wrong. Research the companies that you want to, you know, this is you going into business with them. Okay. Yeah, Research no the companies, make sure they're being transparent, ask questions, um, make sure, hold them to task, you know? And I say that to myself every day as a Volhard employee, I hold myself to task. I'm counting on you to hold me to task. Um, I'm on your dog's team. That's all I care about. If I was wanting to make a million dollars, I wouldn't be in the dog food industry. I would be in the tech industry. So um, I'm on your dog's team. I want to make our products better. I want to identify products that you think you need. Um, if you're not a candidate for Volhard, I will tell you outright, listen, you're not. But this is what you should look at because I'm on your dog's team. I want your dog to win at the end of the day. So if you've got questions... If you have a specific issue with your dog that we couldn't cover during this time that we've had today, um, Lori will share my email address. Please reach out. Don't be a stranger. You don't have to buy Volhard. Reach out and reach to people who can help and we will get you where you're going. I drag Lori into a ton of things with Volhard clients. <laughs> she has dragged me along yep. uh, as she has... Well, found new and, testing and all those things. And, and I jump in and I say, I'm going to do this on my dog and I'll tell you what I experience. Um, 
We've had long conversations about what we see, what she sees in the office, what I see in training, what I see, what the questions I get. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked on many a research conversation about trying to find ways to fix dogs. And that includes all the tools in the toolbox, all the companies you're going to see at her healthy expo. We're all there for the dog. Yeah. And we all are willing to work together to get to that end. Well, so and, and all, of, all of my sponsors and my exhibitors are like you, so engaged in educating people, mm -hmm. you know, yes, you're all in business. You all sell product to of course. the bills, but everybody gives away so much educational content and shares what they're learning and what new things are in the pipeline. And that's what makes that's what makes my event special to be able to just walk around and talk to those people. And that's what makes these companies specials and why they are invited and certain other Some are not. companies are not. It's not the right place. You want people to be no. successful. And if they're not in the right place, then they're not going to be successful, right? You right. know, Brian and Lisa Berg, the owners of this company, Wendy Volhard has since she's three retired. quarters retired. She's earned it. Um, she's on the R and D side. Uh, more than anything else. She's playing in the arena she wants to play in. But Brian and Lisa Berg, the owners of this company, they are immersed in the dog world. They have been their whole careers. Yeah. So, you know, you're getting people who, this is a family-owned company, you're getting people who really have your dog first in mind. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Deb... Deb says, we'll do one more quick question and then I've got to sure. let you know. Uh, any, any other questions that haven't been answered, Lori will yeah. share those with me and I can weigh in online and I will make sure to look at all the questions and make sure they're all answered. Yeah, yeah. Keep up on, on these and as you, they can always email you through the website. Correct. Um, but Volhard products don't have bone in them, correct? You, you don't use... Or do you use a that bone is meal? right. And the reason we don't use bone meal, I, honestly, is basically because we can't control the quality of the right. bones that were used for that meal. And I'm yeah. I am suspect. So I'm hesitant to introduce something that might might um, have a negative response in the dog's body. So we choose a mind calcium and mm -hmm. we can control that level of calcium um, in that way. It is yeah. the calcium phosphorus ratio is on point in our food. So you don't need bone with right. our food, which makes it easy for some folks. Right. Because then you can just use a boneless meat to right. add. To and it. what if their dog can't eat edible bone? I have a right. dog that that lost 12 teeth in her last dental. She can't sit there and chew bone. So this is a great way to have an alternative where they are getting the calcium, calcium phosphorus ratio that they need, mm -hmm. um, even though there is a reason that they're precluded from being able to have bone. Sometimes dogs can't digest bone as well as they should. Um, yeah. I will say I do introduce bone to my dogs outside of the Volhard diet because like I said, diversify. I am. Right. I don't want cal mind calcium to be the only source of, of mm -hmm. calcium or phosphorus that they're getting. So yeah. I do introduce chicken necks and turkey necks. And I do have raw meaty bones that I use and ribs and right. goat bones and things like right. that, where she does take in, my hound does, some bone matter, but I watch the fecal matter to make sure. And I watch my right. HTMA test. And I, <laughs> I do these yeah. things to make sure that I'm not tipping the apple cart. Yeah. And again, like you said, verify. That's all. Just verify. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. This has been so much fun. And people are saying thank you, Carol. Yes, there will. These uh, Facebook lives are always available after the fact. And it also will be on YouTube. I'll share it with you, Jen, so you can email out all your people. Outstanding. I know our audience would also love to, to, to you know, watch. come yeah, in and join. Absolutely. Yes. And to get to know you, Lori, which is important. That's what I want them to know you and what you're trying to do. Sure. Well, yeah, and I want them to come to the expo. And I want them to it's, come to the expo. But it's like, I'm getting so excited. It's really coming up fast. It's March 19th and 20th. And it was just announced that New York now has statewide the third lowest infection rate from the virus in the United States, the third lowest. 
So I people worry about New York because we've had high rates before. We're now the safest. The number one state with infections right now is actually Alaska. And I don't know anybody. Well, it's cold, there right? Now. So we're it's not going cold. there anyway. We're not. No, no, no. We'll All wait right. till well, I will be seeing you soon. You will. And we will have giveaways at the expo and we will have samples and we will have deals. So please come visit us with your yeah. questions. I will be there. I can stand aside from the booth and we can talk about your specific issue. Yes. Um, yes. Give me a jingle. Listen, Lori and I, we come together. So if you're one of Lori's clients, we come together and we talk all the time and we count on each other um, to bring in our heads together and to, to get to the root cause of whatever's happening. So just know you have a lot of people on your team that you have access to. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care.